Alright guys, what is going on everybody? My name is the Dizzy Viper and welcome to today's tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can make a realistic looking neon sign from scratch. So I'm going to start off with a simple rectangle. Basically make it like that. A little thicker. A little taller. So we have a base like this somewhat. I'm just going to inner extrude this a little bit so we get that border like this. Next we need the text. For the text I'm going to use mo text simply and I have a simple text copied here. These are the Japanese symbols for neon sign. So we're going to just put them in here. And in order to get a vertical text you just use the enter key to offset all these characters. So here we have our Japanese text. Let me just 90 so we see it the right way like this. And maybe put it to middle instead of left so we actually have it right in the middle like that Maybe a little smaller so it actually fits into our sign like this perfect so now we're gonna be creating these neon tubes around here and this is actually very simple so all I'm gonna do to do that is simply take our text that we just created and make it editable and you will already see that it created a couple of sub null objects uh, with all the different characters in it but these are actually not polygons, these are splines that are extruded. And that is good because we only need the splines. So let's just take out our splines from our uh, characters right here, like that. So now we have our characters here as you can see. And uh, in order to make the round edges like this one right here, which the neon tubes usually have, uh, we simply just select our characters and select all our points like this. So all our points are selected. Now you make a right click right there and select chamfer like this. And I usually use a radius of three centimeters, which looks like this. So as you can see, now we got all these rounded edges right here. Now here's the problem if you select all edges right here, like as you can see, it doesn't work always. So if you have some of these characters like this, uh, it might be better to select them by hand, but I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. So now in order to get all these uh, characters to actually appear as neon tubes, you create a cylinder like that. Make it about one centimeter in diameter, like that. And right in your settings of your cylinder, make sure to set a high amount of height segments. I'm always using 1000 just to make sure it's all right, but you can use less depending on the character you're working on. So next we go up here to our spline wrap tool and now just make a spline wrap child of your cylinder. Next you have to set your spline axis to Y, plus Y or minus Y, it doesn't really matter uh, for neon signs as they have no specific texture on them. And now all you gotta do is drop your splines right into the spline tab right here. And as you can see, it creates these nice looking tubes. And let's just repeat this for the other three characters. So now that we've done that, we have pretty nice looking neon tubes already. So next we have a little detail that I used. It's not really visible in this render, but as you can see, if I make it a little bigger right here, I used some standoffs right there. As you can see that, that actually hold the neon tubes themselves. And this is actually very simple to do. So what I did is I copied all these splines from our characters again. Wait, let me just put this in a null so you, we don't get confused. Um, so I just copy all these splines right here and basically use them as cloning object for my cylinders or my standoffs. So let's create another cylinder like this. Make it a little smaller maybe, like that. Um, so this should be about the right size. Maybe it's a little too big, but we can always change it later. So uh, now we create a cloner, put our cylinder in there, set the cloner to object, and now just put our spline into the object tab right here. Now as you can see what it does, it just clones uh, the cylinders around the spline. Uh, but what you, what you wanna do now is uh, simply set this distribution to even. Now as you can see there are too many, so you just reduce it by a little bit, so it looks up something like that, maybe a little more, yeah. And as you can see, um, our cylinders are not really in the right position to hold our neon tubes, right? So what you're gonna do is simply just set the spline back a little bit so you don't see the cylinders coming through the neon tubes anymore, like this. 
And as you can see, their diameter is still a little too big, so let's just change that in our settings right here. Maybe put it to 0 0.7. Yeah, this looks better. So as you can see now, if I make my spline invisible, we have actually stands holding our neon tubes like this. So again, we have to do this for all our four characters. I'm just going to speed that process up really quick. So as you can see, since our lowest character right here has a little more subdivisions, it also created more clones. So what you can do if you want to have more clones around the other characters, you simply just go into your cloner and increase the count like this. Maybe that's a little too much, like that. Then, yep, looks good as well. And like this, uh, maybe five is a little too much. Yeah, this looks better. So now we already have our ne main neon tubes, right? All right, so um, what I, else I did here is I created some neon tubes around this. Um, and as you can see, this is a little bright because I used a little uh, bloom on it. But as you can see right here, they actually are segments of neon tubes going around here. And I'm going to show you how you do that right now. So the way I did this, I started off with a rectangular spline like that. Rotated it 90 degrees so it fits actually our board again. And now match the size of your rectangle with the size of your sign. So I'm going to do that right here, like this. A little taller, like that. Make sure that's about the middle of your border, like this. About in, about in the middle. It's not. It doesn't have to be exact, but it, it shouldn't be too off also. And now we use the rounding tool, like this. As you can see, the rounding is way too big. So we just make it a lot smaller. Something like this. The rounding of this spline should be around the same radius of the rounding on your characters. I thought this just makes it a little more realistic. So we put it out like this. And now uh, we make it editable and input some more subdivisions. And you might ask what do you need subdivisions for in this rectangular? We need that to make actually these segments happen, right? Because all this thing is all one big spline, um, but right here, where they where they are disconnected, they're actually not disconnected, they just go inside the board. Uh, and I did that because disconnecting them would take a lot more time, I think. So let's just do this really quick. We go into our point selection and right click and select our line cut tool. So in order to make a very clean horizontal cut, you just press and hold shift while cutting. So let's just make one right here, like this, and maybe one here. So now we have our two edges, which represent these two edges right here. And now, of course, we need another two points to actually make the offset happen. So, and these two points have to be very close to our already existing points, like this and like this. And I'm going to show you right now why. So what we're going to do is basically select these two middle points right there. Uh, maybe put them a little lower because they're pretty high like that. And now select the middle points like this and drag the points right into your frame like that. And in order to get the rounded edges, you select your outer points like this and select chamfer again and also put in a radius of three. So here you go, you have these rounded edges now. And you can repeat this as often as you want. I just do it uh, once to show how it works. And now in order to get the neon tubes, we just use the same technique as we used for our characters. You can also just copy your uh, cylinder spline wrap right here and simply just put in your rectangle into the spline. And in order to get the standoffs, we use the same technique again. So basically we are gonna use another rectangle, match it with the size of our neon sign. And again, you can just copy the cloner and cylinder setup from the earlier standoffs on your characters and just put in the rectangle into your object right now, like this. So what you also can do to make it look even better is also make this rectangle editable. And now with the line cut tool, you can select or cut into your rectangle where your standoff should be. And since we have a gap here, right, which is this gap right here, there should not be 
a standoff right in the middle. So the way you can do that is basically just cut one line here and cut one line below, like this. So as you can see right now, we have two cuts, one here and one there. And now if I set my cloner instead of even to vertex, it will create a stand right where I did my cuts, like this. And it will look like there are some last stands before they actually go into the wall. So as you can see also up here they, they have two stands and you can also do one in the middle or two, that's up to you. But basically that's how it works. And last what I would like to show you is how you make these holdings right here, especially with these uh, little pieces in there. If you don't know what they're here for in real life, it's actually pretty simple. Um, at the end of each of these cords there is a screw. And that screw fits exactly into these middle pieces. And since these cables get a little loose over time, you can retighten them by simply just turning these little pieces right there. Just a little side fact. So here is how I did that. I simply created two tubes. Wait, let me just uh, put all these into a null object, make it invisible for now. So uh, I created two tubes like this. Maybe a little outer. It's about right already. And just offset it by, I don't know, 600, minus 600 centimeters. And put this at plus 100 centimeters, uh, 600 centimeters, sorry. Um, and now I simply just put um, a cylinder in here, like that. Put it right there, maybe a little smaller in diameter, like this. And wait, let me do this like that. So you have this piece right here. Maybe the, the tube should be a little thicker, like this. And the outside cylinders should be a little thicker uh, as well, like this. Um, so that way, basically, you have these screws now, these, these little screws right there. Let me, just, let me just put them into an object so we can actually turn them all together, like this. Now simply just create a cylinder and rotate it like that. Make it a little thicker as well, like this. And make it longer. Also you can put them a little more inside so they already look like they have been tightened already. Like this and like that. And then just copy this one again, put it a little closer right here to the other side. Copy the cylinder again. This time make it a little shorter like this. And there you go. Now we put all that into a null object maybe like this. And what you can do for comfort to actually access the angle of this cable a little easier, you can just uh, select this tool right here and put your axis right at the front of your cable like this. And I'm gonna show you why in just a second. So let's just reactivate our neon sign. And as you can see, our cable is way too big, but we can change that simply by just rescaling the whole thing like this, put it in the middle like that. So now the reason we put our axis right here, so if we had a frame like this, make it a little smaller, like that, that's actually here to hold that whole sign, you can simply select your null object, put it right here, like right in there, and to get this little offsets, like as you can see, they're in some angles right here. You don't have actually to rotate it a lot, you just simply can rotate it from here and they will fit automatically, like this, for example. This might be a little long, but it's just to show you right now. And yeah, that's basically it. Uh, it's simple as that. So yeah, this is the tutorial on how to make a neon sign. If you enjoyed the tutorial, make sure to smash that like button. And if you have any questions, just feel free to ask in the comment section down below, and I will answer them. Uh, with that being said, thank you for watching, and have a nice day.